Hello everyone, a very good morning. This is Kishore here, Chief Currency Analyst from Trade Achievers. So I'm really very excited to announce to you that we're going to start a new series called as Trading Tutorials, where I'm going to teach you on different aspects of trading, on how to be a consistently profitable trader in the financial markets. So we're going to see about plenty of different uh, strategies and uh, know how to analyze the market using technical analysis, fundamentals and even sentimental analysis. So we're going to see so many subjects in this trading tutorials. So wait, wait, let's get into our trading tutorials. So alright guys, the first subject what we're going to see in our trading tutorial is the Japanese candlesticks. So first of all, before getting into the in-depth study of Japanese candlesticks, first let us know what is a candlestick. So what does a candlestick actually represents? So the first thing what we have to get in our mind in this subject is a candlestick is a symbolic representation of a buyer and a seller. It represents the domination of a buyer and a seller. If the buyers are going to dominate the market, it's going to be a bullish market. If the sellers are going to dominate the market, it is considered as a bearish market. So that is what the candlestick is representing to us. So in this subject, there are different types of candlesticks and we can identify which candle is used for trend continuation and which is used for trend reversals. And <clears throat> there are plenty candlesticks which we are going to analyze today. So let's see the first type of candlestick. So all right guys, now we are going to see an in-depth study on what is the Japanese candlestick. So first of all, let me show you how does a candlestick actually looks like. Yeah, so this is how a candlestick look like. Now we have the two types of candles here. One is the bullish candle and the red one is called as the bearish candle. Now let us first of all understand what this, this actually represent. Now a green candle represent the buyers were dominating the market at that particular time frame. For an instance, let's say if you are trading in a one hour chart, in the particular one hour time frame, the market opened at a price of 50. And at the same, in between that one hour, the market opened at 50 rupees and it came all the way to 45. And then it moved all the way to 60. And at the end of one hour, it came and closed at 55. Now, since the closing price is higher than the open price, we call this as a bullish candle. Since the market opened at 50 and it closed at 55, we call it as bullish candle. Since the buyers were in control of the market at that particular one hour. In the same case scenario, consider the market opened at 55 rupees, it went up to 60 and then came all the way to 45 and then at the end of one hour, it closed at 50 rupees. Then it represents sellers were in control of the market because the closing price is lesser than that of the open price. Since the closing price is lesser than that of the open price, we call it as a bearish candle so a candlestick is a representation of the dominance of a buyer and a seller if the uh, closing price is higher than the open price we will get a bullish candle if the closing price is lower than that of the open price we get a bearish candle all right so this is what a candlestick represents now what we are going to say is there are different types of candlesticks and it has plenty meanings for different types of candle. So that is what we are going to get into. All right. So the next one is first, let's understand what does a candlestick actually represents. So in this, I have given you the wordings. A candlestick can be also be called as a bulls and a beer. So there is a saying in the market in the Wall Street, they call it as bulls and the beers. Bulls represents the market is being controlled by the buyers and if the market is being controlled by the sellers it is being represented as the buyers <clears throat> it simply means buyers and sellers in a market all right if you see a long white candle stick forming it represents buyer are now in control of the market since i've already told you if there is a closing price which is higher than the opening price it represents buyers and if the closing price is lesser than the 
open price it represents sellers and there was one more thing which is called as a shadow in the previous thing that is a shadow now i'll explain you what is a shadow now this particular area now you can see there is a line over here above the candle now this part represents a candle only the green part and the red part it represents a candle and the stick the black long line represents a shadow now what we are going to see are the different types of candle patterns the first one is called a spinning top now from the image you can see that how does a spinning top actually looks like now a spinning top has a longer upper shadow and a longer lower shadow and small real bodies this is how a spinning top looks like as you can see from this image i'll give you a better explanation for example let's say the market opened at 50 rupees and it came all the way down to 30 and it went all the way up to 70 but at the end of the time at that particular time frame the market came and closed at 55 now consider this as a one hour chart in the particular one hour the market opened at 50 it went up to 30 sorry it went up to 70 it came down to 30 but at the end of one hour it closed at 55 so from this the opening price and the closing price was very small but the momentum of the market where it went up to 70 and 30 is very huge so this is where it is formed as a spinning top so there should be a longer upper shadow and a longer lower shadow but the body of the candle should be small then it is formed as a spinning top all right now the color of the real body is not very important through my experience i have seen that the real color of a spinning top is not very important it can be red or it can be green but still it represents a spinning top all right and now what we have to see is what does this candle actually represents in the market the pattern indicates the indecision between a buyer and a seller so a spinning top is representing a indecision moment between a buyer and a seller now this is what you learn from all the uh, you know internet stuffs from uh, for example from youtubes and all those other you no know, videos you learn people say about spinning top they say it's an indecision moment it should have a longer body and a lower shadow and small bodies but what is different with us is we are, through our experience we have learned certain rules for spinning top only if you are able to apply these rules then you will be able to make profits out of spinning tops so now now let's see what are the rules for a spinning top now rule number one once a spinning top is formed wait for the next candle to finish for a better confirmation if you have a spinning top at the uptrend then wait for the next candle to finish in a silk candle then we can go for a entry now that is the rule number one so the thing is the people what they do is when they see a spinning top they immediately go for a sell or a buy thinking it is a uh, it's a reversal sign and we can go for a buy or a sell that is the problem with the retail traders because they don't have a proper set of rules for spinning top so the rule is once a spinning top is formed wait for the next candle to finish so it has to finish that is one more important point is it has to finish so after the completion for example if you get a spinning top and the next candle is a sell candle then you can go for a sell or if you get a spinning top and the next candle is buy you can go for a buy and it should be at the tops or the bottoms all right now the rule number two is now it is not always we have to wait for the confirmation of a next candle if a spinning top is formed in an uptrend near the resistance zone or a support zone you don't need to wait for the next candle since there is a resistance above the spinning top it see in this i have just mentioned about resistance but it's valid for also the support if a spinning top is formed near a support or a resistance you don't have to wait for the next candle you can immediately go for a sell or a buy 
all right now rule number three is never validate a spinning top if it is formed in a middle of a sideways trend because it won't often work but uh, now i think uh, plenty of people will be confused what is this middle of a sideways trend i'll give you an explanation now now consider the market is going in a sideways direction the market is trading inside a sideways market now a middle of a sideways represents this area if a sp at the middle if a spinning top is formed what people do is they go for a sell over here but the thing is for a sideways market if the market touches the lower bottoms it has to go to the tops so even if a spinning top is formed at the middle of a sideways trend uh, consider if the spinning top is formed uh, near this area you don't have to no uh, consider it as a confirmation you better leave it alone so if it is formed in the middle of a sideways trend you just keep out of spinning top and don't trade in it all right so now i'll give you a better uh, no picture so you can understand what these rules apply and where does it apply now this is a chart now as you can see from this chart we have a spinning top over here so this candle is a spinning top but our rule number one says since it has formed at the top most of the retail trader what they would have done is they would have gone for a sell over here most of the retail traders would have gone for a sell over here and what they think is it will go all the way down but the reality is since they didn't know the rule that they have to wait for the next candle for a confirmation so as you can see at the top there was a spinning top but the next candle was not a bearish candle so the next candle was a bullish candle so this trade was invalid so there was candle without confirmation so that is what our rule number one says once a spinning top is formed wait for the next candle to finish for a better confirmation if you have a spinning top at the uptrend then wait for the next candle to finish in a sell candle so this rule applies here so we have a spinning top but the next candle is not a sell candle but is a bullish candle getting it so this trade was invalid but at the same time imagine the market uh, you can see the market came all the way up here and then market gave a spinning top at the top now at the top of the trend there was a spinning top formed and we don't go for a sell over here no we don't go for a sell over here we go for a sell at here because we wait for the next candle confirmation and once the market has given a confirmation that the market after a spinning top a confirmation has been done we go for a sell over here and you can see after the sell the market rallied all the way down so this trade would have been a huge profit so this is where rule number one applies so rule number one once a spinning top is formed wait for the next candle to finish in this case this candle and if the candle is negative or if the candle is bearish after a spinning top then go for a sell now in the same scenario consider if the market is coming down and you have a spinning top at the bottom of a downtrend and then what you do is you have to wait for the next candle that is a rule right so if the next candle is bullish then you can go for a buy if the next candle is considered as a bearish candle then the trade will be invalid so i hope you can understand how does a spinning top works so not only understanding how does a spinning top works we have to know how to make use of the spinning top so use these rules you can make note of these rules if you want or you can just uh, go through it so whenever you see a spinning top you wait for the next candle all right so rule number 2 has a different form where if it is formed near a support resistance we'll see in the later part when the market is forming near a support and resistance so now this is how you trade a spinning top all right so i hope you're clear with spinning top how does a spinning top works all right so the next one what we are going to see 
down the line it's called as doji now plenty of people have would have heard of doji there are different types of dojis so now we are going to see how to trade using doji candlesticks now in dojis there are different types of dojis the first one is called as long legged dojis and the second one is called as dragonfly dojis and the third one is called as gravestone doji now let us see how does a doji look like now as you can see from this uh, image we have the gravestone doji that is a normal doji this is a dragonfly doji and we have a long leg doji now each doji has a different character of its own now we are going to see each and every dojis and we are going to see how to trade in them all right so we have gravestone dragonfly and long leg so how does a doji look like this in the spinning top what we saw is you have a longer shadow but you have a smaller body then it is represented as a spinning top but how does a doji look like this you have a long shadows but there won't be any kind of a body now i'll give you a better explanation consider the market opened at 50 it went up to 60 it came up down until 40 but at the end of the time frame it closed at same exact 50 rupees so the when the open price and the close price are equal it is called as doji when the open price and the closing price is equal we call it as long legged doji so now let's see the rules of the different types of dojis now first we'll see what is a long legged doji now a long legged doji has a huge shadow but the body will be at the same price of opening and closing now it represents a indecision moment likewise uh, in the previous candlestick in the spinning top we saw spinning top represents a indecision moment likewise even the long legged doji represents us a uh, indecision moment in the market where the buyers and sellers are equally matched where uh, i'll just give you a better explanation now this market is between a competition between the two players one is the buyers the other one is the sellers if the buyers are dominating we get a bullish candle and if the sellers are dominating we get a bearish candle but when the buyers and sellers are equally matched 50 50% we get dojis so that is what a uh, doji represents in this chart so the buyers were in control until it went to 60 and then from there the sellers started to control the market they came up to 40 but at the end of the time both were equal and the market price closed at at the same opening price getting it all right so now what are the rules for trading using long leg doji so the same rules rule number 1 the same rules apply here too if a doji is formed in a downtrend wait for the next candle to finish as a bull candle then we can go for a entry so as we have seen the rule from the spinning top the same rule applies for long leg doji too because both represents indecision moment in the market rule number 2 same thing we need not wait for the confirmation if the candle is formed near the support or resistance all right so let us have a example now as you can see here <coughs> we have a long leg doji over here and then what happened is after that we had a confirmation candle and then from here we could have gone for a buy since there was no support at the first time but at the second time when the market went up and it came up to the same level as the previous level so this area was considered as a support line getting it so this line is now considered as a support line since the first time the market came here and it all went all the way up and then it came and retested the same level over here so now this level is considered as a support area now what happened is here in this first scenario the rule number 1 was applied so the rule number 1 was to 
after a successful completion of doji we have to wait for the next candle and then we could have gone for a buy over here all right so after this completion after doji then we had a confirmation candle where the market closed in a bullish term then we went for a buy but at the second scenario what happened is since we had a support line we need not wait for the next candle so that was our rule number two same thing we need not wait for a confirmation if the candle is formed near a support or a resistance zone now as you can see from here we have a support line over here this is your support but what happened is if you are going to apply your first rule here after the doji you had a bearish candle so if you had applied a rule number one here what would have happened is you would have not taken a trade since there was a bear candle after a long leg doji but through our experience we have learned different rules for different scenarios since there was a support already so a support plus a long leg doji so near the support what happened is the sellers has withdrawn their positions now it represents a bull bulls are going to control the market so that is why you need not wait for the, this candle but after the candle doji is finished you would have gone for a buy over here excuse me sorry so you can you could have gone for a buy at here this was your buying area so that's why i have mentioned rule number 2 near the support line need not wait for a confirmation you could have gone for a buy getting it so how does the rule helps you to trade the candlesticks so without the rules you can't trade the candlesticks to be a profitable trading method so you need to have your rules in order to make profits from the candlesticks all right so i hope you understand long leg doji so next one what we are going to see is the dragonfly doji a dragonfly doji has a long lower shadow whereas the body is finished at the top of the candle what it represents is the buyers are in control now potential a trend reversal is possible so in the beginning spinning top and long leg doji represented there will be a indecision moment between a buyer and a seller but what does a dragonfly doji represents is it represents a trend reversal so those two spinning top and dragonfly doji are in decision moment but whereas sorry long leg doji and spinning top is a in decision moment whereas dragonfly doji is a trend reversal candle so so dragonfly doji as we have seen in the picture it looks like this so the open price was 50 so the market was not able to go up it came up to 30 or 40 anything but at the end of the closing it came and closed at the same price at 50 so a long leg doji has a lower shadow even it could have a smaller upper shadow one more thing i'll uh, give you a clear picture and how to identify whether it is a long leg doji or it is a dragonfly doji if the market is opened and you have a small wick above the <coughs> the opening price but the long lower shadow is there it is considered as a dragonfly doji but only way to confirm it is the overall candle let's say this overall candles size was the low was 40 and the high was 50 then the difference between this is 10 points so in this 10 points if the closing price is above 30 percent that means it should be above for example let's say this is 50 and 40 if the closing price is above 47 then it is considered as a dragonfly doji so 30 percent up sorry 70 percent above the low price for example 40 and 70 percent will be 47 so if the market is closing above 47 though from the overall candle if the market is inside 30 percent every area is considered as a dragonfly doji if that is above 30 percentage of the overall candle six high to low so i hope this will help you to you know identify whether it's a dragonfly doji or it is a 
long leg doji all right so in the rule number 1 if a dragonfly doji is formed in a down trend wait for the next candle to finish as a bull candle then we can go for a entry all right so rule number 2 is if this if the candle is formed near a support it can be a very high confirmation of a trend reversal since the sellers have exist exited that positions need not wait for the confirmation and we have a different rule than the other two candlesticks the rule number 3 never trade a dragonfly doji if it is found in a uptrend it is not valid at all for example i'll give you an example for that so the dragonfly doji has to be formed at the bottom of a downtrend then it is valid if the dragonfly doji is found in a uptrend then it's considered as not valid because people say it can be considered as a trend continuation no it doesn't work since the success rate is very low and we have back tested it the success rate was very low so that is why we say if the dragonfly doji is formed in a uptrend at the top of the uptrend if a dragonfly doji is formed it doesn't represent a trend continuation it is a invalid candle i hope you understand that all right so let me give you a example on how a dragonfly works now in this scenario what happened is the market was coming in a downtrend and after a long downtrend we have a dragonfly doji so previously i said if this candle was 10 points from high to low if this is above 30% <coughs> so within 30% it is considered as a dragonfly doji so this was a perfect candle of dragonfly but we don't have any kind of a support here so since there was no support we have to so we can see the market it gave a confirmation so after a dragonfly was formed after the it gave it was closed about 30% from the low to high we have a confirmation candle here so this was a bullish candle then we could have gone for a buy from here and we have seen the market went all the way rally up getting it so rule applies everywhere if you are going to trade a dragonfly doji you can't just trade the dragonfly doji after it was closed because in the worst case scenario imagine if the dragonfly was formed after a downtrend if there is a negative candle there are possibilities it can even go for a sell trend so always wait for the next candle confirmation if there is no support and resistance so once the candle is confirmed then you can go for a buy or a sell so this is how you trade a dragonfly doji so next on the line we'll see about gravestone doji so how does a gravestone doji works is this is just an opposite to dragonfly doji so we saw dragonfly doji would have open price and closing price at the top of the candle whereas uh, gravestone doji will have it at the bottom of the candle so we have a longer upper body and the body is at the bottom of the candle so this is dragonfly sorry this is gravestone and this will be considered as a dragonfly now let's see now we have a resistance point here so the dragonfly doji was formed near a resistance line so we don't have to apply the rule number 1 over here as you can see here what happened is we see there is a resistance line over here and the market has formed a gravestone doji but look at this we have a negative candle so there was a confirmation but we do not need this confirmation to go for a sell because since we have a resistance line above the gravestone near the gravestone we could have gone for a sell at the closing of the gravestone doji so and the market rallied all the way down you can see that so when the market is forming a gravestone doji near a resistance you don't have to follow rule number 1 you can go with the rule number 2 but whether if there is no resistance or a support near the candle you have to follow the rule number 1 so this is how we trade the markets we use certain rules in order to identify the markets 
all right so the rule number one is wait for the next candle confirmation so you can see the rules if any kind of okay, dragonfly doji long candle long leg doji spinning top or gravestone any kind of a candlesticks if it is formed wait for the next candle for a confirmation if the confirmation is done you can go for a buy or a sell rule number two is you can go for a buy or a sell without a confirmation if there is a support or a resistance and never trade a dragonfly doji or a gravestone doji uh, yeah this one i just forgot to tell you if the dra gravestone doji is formed it should be formed at the top of a uptrend it represents sellers will be controlling the market and it has to come down if the gravestone doji is formed at the bottom of a downtrend then this trade is invalid we don't trade over this because it doesn't represent a trend continuation this trade is totally invalid all right so follow these rules use rule number one and two and three try it out and check it out in the market and what i'll do is i'm going to give you more candlesticks videos so this is just part one I don't want to make a two hours three hours video so I'll just make it in different parts where I'll be giving you every half an hour a video so this will be the part one of our trading tutorial video so this part one Japanese candlesticks part one so we'll be having different parts of candlesticks videos in the next topic I'll be covering on uh, hammer hanging man and uh, engulfing and there are different types so we'll have different types of videos in our trading tutorials I hope this helps you with the rules which we have found and we have been trading in this market for past a decade now and we have set certain rules for our students to understand the market so this is the first time I am giving out to the public through YouTube. Alright guys I hope this was really helpful to you on understanding how the Japanese candlesticks work. So this is just one part of the candlesticks and we have plenty more to come. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be back with another video where I'll be teaching you on, on the other sessions of the Japanese candlesticks. Thank you very much.